day to recoup. The locals are right back on the diamond, and the baseball schedule has little kindness going forward. After 20 games in 20 days, they one up it with 21 in the next 20. Regardless of how many games and how many breaks, the next three weeks will tell a lot. to do the slip and slide when we were kids, but how many of us wanted to do it into our mid-20s or even our 30s? Well, Yasmani Grandal and Everett Cabrera, because of all the rain that fell about an hour or so ago here at Citizens Bank Park, they had themselves a little contest, and it looks like Cabrera, he wound up winning, but now the rain has gone, the sun is starting to pop out, and the grounds crew is getting the field ready for tonight's ball game between the Phils and the San Diego Padres. It's game one of a three-game series. Now, the Phillies just finished a grueling stretch of games. They had the off day yesterday, but now they have 21 games in the next 20 days, including seven against the Atlanta Braves, four against the Miami Marlins, and the other games outside the National League East. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy. And look, J.B. Moyers back in town getting ready for the Phillies to take on the San Diego Padres tonight in game one of the series. All right, the Phillies offense has struggled this year to be consistent but the Padres offense they have really struggled this season they really have and they've had a lot of the same struggles that the Phillies have had and their struggles begin with getting guys on base somehow moving them over and getting them in and you see here in our graphic that you know they're last in runs last in average last or 13th in, in home runs and last in on base percentage and I think that right there explains it all and now we as we transition here into Ian Kennedy here's one of their bright spots this year with the Padres Ian Kennedy came over from the Arizona Diamondbacks, and you see here in these highlights, he elevates his fastball for strikeouts, and then on top of that, he's got a nice curveball that goes top to bottom of the zone, and he gets a lot of strikeouts in that in that regard, and his walks are down this year as well, and this is what's allowing him, Ian, to become the effective pitcher that he thinks he can be. Well, he's always pitched well against the Phillies. In fact, uh, when he was with the Arizona Diamondbacks, there were games where he was just flat out dominant against the Phillies. Yeah, and he has had, and you and you see why. He, the stuff that he's that we saw in those highlights, again, he's got the above average fastball, a very good curveball, but he also has a cut fastball and a changeup. And when he has the curveball in his repertoire, that's that's kind of the equalizer, but when you can add that cutter and the changeup to it on and, and continue to use those pitches throughout a game, it really allows your dominance to be very controllable. All right, well, he said he's having the most fun he's ever had in his career pitching right now for the San Diego Padres, and his numbers over the last handful of starts certainly dictate that. Meanwhile, A.J. Burnett, well, he's trying to find command in the strike zone. Uh, he was not too happy with the way he pitched his last time out against the Washington Nationals. He'll make his 14th start of the season. And the pursuit continues for Jimmy Rollins. He's four away from tying Mike Schmidt for the most hits in franchise history and five away from establishing a brand new mark. Phillies baseball is brought to you by
this ball game underway. Of course, with all the rain that fell about an hour or so ago, I don't think I've ever seen this field as flooded as it was. But the drainage is unbelievable. And obviously, you can see from that shot right there that everything looks pretty clear. The grounds crew is just putting some finishing touches on the lines going down the first base line, and they still have to do the right field line as well. So as they do that, the umpires are exchanging the lineup cards uh, behind home plate with Ryan Sandberg and Jose Valentin, the first base coach for the Padres. And this is where the Phillies stand right now. Surprisingly, they're only seven and a half games out in the National League East, even though they're 11 games under 500. Nobody's just walking away with this division at this point. No, they're not walking away with this division, and that's a good thing for the Phillies. And hopefully with this little stretch of, of games here, if the Phillies can make some hay in these next couple series, and you know, before the All-Star break, they play Miami twice and Atlanta twice, they can really make an impact on this division. Well, and they've just got to start playing better baseball. They've got to get better with their clutch hits, and obviously... Uh, they've got to get better overall. Now, meanwhile, in the National League West, the San Francisco Giants are 20 games over 500. San Diego, seven games under. Look how far back they are. They're 13 and a half games back of the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, and they've got to make a lot of hay. Uh, a lot I'm, of hay. I'm not sure that they're going to be able to make that up. But, again, a young team, and they're trying to find their way. And, you know, I, I think, you know, Buddy Black is hoping that you know, here in the next year or two they can start to make that push. Well, we'll see what happens. As we said, the Phillies uh, have a chance on this homestand to make up some ground overall and just play better baseball. And, you know, Murph, they've had success against some of the teams in the National League West recently, and one of those teams, the San Diego Padres. You're right about that, Tom. And, you know, Ryan Sandberg was asked about that very topic today, about this homestand and about these particular teams that are right ahead of the Phillies. And, you know, he made no bones about it. He said, you know, we have 100 or so games left in this season, but we're going to have to start now if we're going to be in the mix. And that certainly is what he is hoping he'll get out of his squad tonight. And as you mentioned, success against the Padres has come uh, very frequently over uh, the last few years you take a look since the beginning of 2004 the Phillies are 46 and 20 against San Diego 20 and 13 right here at Citizens Bank Park and they've just dominated the series obviously 15 4 and 2 since 2004 in fact the Padres haven't won a series against the Phillies since 2007 so hopefully that trend continues and it is a first step in uh, what will be a long journey back to uh, 500 and then above 500 for these Philadelphia Phillies guys all right Murph we appreciate that Ryan Sandberg said yesterday on WIP here in Philadelphia that he feels like this team still has a run left in them because they haven't put together any kind of a run. So he expects offensively that they will have that at some point. But as everybody knows, it's got to happen soon. So they're going over the ground rules right now behind home plate. When we get back, they'll have everything ready field-wise. And we'll give you the lineups at first pitch here in Philadelphia. night 
here in Philadelphia. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Padres. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off in center field, Will Venable, Everett Cabrera bats second. Seth Smith hits third, follows by Carlos Quinton and Chase Headley. Yonder Alonso's over at first base, he'll bat sixth. In the bottom third of Rivera, Peterson, and Ian Kennedy. And they'll face Phillies right-hander A.J. Burnett. Burnett three and five with an ERA of 4.41. Uh, Jimmy, he's not only trying to get deeper into a ball game, he's trying to avoid that little rough patch that he's had third, fourth, fifth innings over his last couple of starts. Yeah, and, you know, AJ's walks have been up this year. I'm sure he's not pleased with that. You see, he's got hits to innings pitch are, are equal. And when you add those base zone balls and the hits together, it's a lot of base runners, and hence you, you see some struggles. And unfortunately, you know, AJ is there right now, but being the professional he is, I guarantee he can get out of this. Well, his career numbers two at six with an ERA of 4.25 against the Padres, but he does have a no hitter against the San Diego Padres. He does, and you know, AJ just has to go back to believing in his stuff, using his sinker, utilizing the high fastball when when need be, but also using that curveball, which we've seen at spurts during the course of the season. The curveball has been a very effective pitch for AJ. Well, it's time now for our Nissan keys to tonight's ball game. All right, Jamie, you've had about 10 days to figure out these keys. <laughs> well, my first key tonight is getting back to the ba basics with hitting. And what I mean by that is when the Phillies have had their, their short spurts of success this year, they're using the middle of the diamond and playing off of that. The other key would be forcing contact early by the Padres and utilizing the defense. Well, there you go. He almost utilized the defense on that first pitch. It's hit foul. And it's no balls in one strike. Will Venable is the leadoff hitter for San Diego. He's coming off an 0 for 7 clip during the series against the Washington Nationals. Venable so far this year hitting just 203 with a home run and 10 runs batted in. And the 0 1 pitch. Again to the left side. This one will stay in play. Dominic Brown glides under it and he makes the catch. Now this playing field took an awful lot of rain uh, over the last couple of hours. You wouldn't know it by looking at it, but it is pretty soggy out there in the outfield. The warning track, how they were able to clear off all the water from that warning track, and there's still some standing water. Uh, uh, it's remarkable. What, Mike did, and his staff did a phenomenal job. If you would have seen this field an hour ago, you might have thought it was unplayable. I have never seen that much rain sitting in the outfield as it was earlier tonight. First pitch to Everett Cabrera is taken outside. It's one ball and no strikes. Cabrera hitting 232 with three homers and 11 runs batted in. Out of play, one ball and one strike. Padres as a team come in 15th in the National League and hitting with a 218 mark. They're averaging just Barely over three runs per game, which is also last in the National League. And Bud Black in his eighth year as the skipper. He's had tough offenses before, but nothing like this. Well, and sometimes when you get into this type of a rut as an offense, it's really hard to get out. You know, guys start doing things, you know, individually instead of doing things as a team. And I know Matt's alluded to it earlier as we've been on broadcast together. You, each guy has to figure out a way to pick each other up and, and play for each other. And I think sometimes you get away from that, you, you lose focus on that, and hence you get into this big type of a rut that you're in. Well, it's three balls and one strike to Cabrera, who was two for 23 on the homestand. Outside ball four, so a one out walk with a high fastball. Well, this is what we're talking about. This is just after, uh, this is about 540, and it just finished raining. Look at all the water out in right field. Jimmy, you played here. I, I've been here for since this ballpark opened. I've never seen anything like that. I've never seen so much water laying on a baseball field. And uh, like I said, you know, Mike did a great job. I think maybe the, uh, the drains were clogged at that moment. Could have been. They could have been <laughs> backed up from all the water that was uh, flowing through. Oh, with one out and a rudder at first. You see what the field looks like now. He would have never known. Seth Smith grounds one to first, right between the legs of Ryan Howard and into right field. That'll be the fourth error of the season for Howard. 
Well, that's been part of the issues for the Phillies. Not the errors as much in the field, but just errors in general. Well, and Everett Cabrera, very heads up base running right there. He, he obviously knows this ground is wet and it's going to be harder for Marlon to get good traction. You see the ball goes under Ryan's glove. I think he thought it was going to come up. You know, you're always taught to go from down to up instead of, you know, going up and thinking it's going to come up. But uh, Everett Cabrera did a great job when that ball was made contact with. He ran hard and got the third base, knowing that it would be difficult for Marlon Bird to get some traction and knowing that that ball would slow down in right field. Well, now Carlos Quinton will step up. Quinton was 0 for 8 against the Nationals. The Phillies set up for two. First pitch is a breaking ball that drops on the outside corner. It's 0 and 1. Carlos Quinton's been one of the issues uh, for the San Diego Padres. He just hasn't gotten on track. I think it's been difficult for Carlos to stay healthy. I think that's been his biggest issue since he's left the White Sox. Chopper back toward the middle. That might be two. Rollins will take it to the bag himself. Throws to first in time. And Burnett works around the walk in the error by Ryan Howard with a 6 3 double play. Thanks to Jimmy Rollins. No runs, no hits. One man left. Middle of the first. The Padres nothing. And the Phillies coming up. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at Ryan Sandberg's starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Leading it off at center field, Ben Revere. Jimmy Rollins bats second. Chase Huntley hits third, followed by Ryan Howard and Marlon Bird. Dominic Brown's in left field. He'll hit six. Carlos Ruiz back in the seven hole. And Cesar Hernandez will bat eighth and play third base. A.J. Burnett, of course, batting ninth. And they'll face 29-year-old right hitter Ian Kennedy. Who is under 500 as a pitcher at 5 and 6, but an ERA of 3.39. That's probably the worst of his numbers, the win loss record. Everything else is pretty darn good. Yeah, he's, he's had a pretty nice year, and I think in his last four or five starts, he's started to figure some things out. He's made some, mechanic, some mechanical adjustments, and uh, he's created some consistency. You're going to see tonight, you're going to see a good fastball that's got some run, and he can elevate a four seam fastball. He's got a curveball, which in the highlights was phenomenal, top to bottom. A cut fastball and a changeup, and I think uh, you know, if he has command of these three tonight, just three of these four pitches, he's going to be a, uh, a tough foe. Well, oh, you saw that that little piece of the scouting report that said he's won 36 games, or he won 36 games in 2011 and 2012, and he only had seven last year. Ben Revere starts uh, things off by taking a strike, and it's 0-1. Actually, since 2012, he's 12 and 16. Hmm. There's the 0 1 pitch to Revere. Up and in. One ball, one strike. Revere is 2 for 4 against Kennedy. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Baxter Pierce of Philadelphia. Phillies hit home run in today's ball game, and Baxter will win $200. Back toward the middle, fielded by Kennedy. Ball wasn't it all that hard, and there's one away. Jimmy Rollins to the plate. For the last 10 days, as we go look at our Mazda leaders, 
both of these teams have continued to struggle offensively. And the Padres hitting just 152 in the last 10 days. The Phillies are 226, but 152. That's tough. Padres. That's tough. And as a pitcher, you got to realize you, you got to feel like you got to go out and put up nine zeros. The ball's pulled to the right side and a diving stop by Peterson. And in time to get Rollins, and he's saying he was safe. He immediately called Ryan Sandberg out. And Jimmy's just going to hang out around the first base coach's box. And Sandberg's going to go out and talk to the first base umpire, Tim Welke, who's the crew chief. Well, Jimmy did react almost immediately. Here we go. Boy, that's really close. Well, that's, I'll give him, whether he's out or safe, that's great hustle on Jimmy's behalf on, on a hard hit ball to the right side of the infield. Yeah, it looks like he did get him by yeah. half a step. By rule, you have to arrive before, you know, there's no tie goes to the runner uh, stuff, even though we say that all the time. And that one, he was just a hair shy of beating that throw. But well, you are right, you know, Jimmy, during the course of his career, people talk about it, the lack of hustle, but, and not all the time, but he was busting up the first base line. And that's what puts pressure on a defense. That's what forces teams to make mistakes when you, when you hustle like that. Well, now with two quick outs, only four pitches for Ian Kennedy. Chase Utley will be the hitter. Utley four for ten in the series against the Reds, and he takes a fastball for a strike. And now it's five, and all five have been fastballs. Be interesting to watch how this uh, develops here. I, I know he, you know, he wants to get his breaking ball into the game, but I think he wants to establish his fastball early. Well, there, there you go. That first breaking ball. And Chase is the type of hitter you just can't throw fastball after fastball after fastball to. Well, you figured he was taking at least one strike, Chase was, knowing how many pitches have been thrown in this first inning. And he takes a second strike. It's one and two. Well, tonight, of course, is the Chase Utley bobble figurine given out thanks to the folks at Pico, all fans. In the dirt again, and it's two balls and two strikes. Chase begins play tonight, sixth in the National League in hitting at 314, tied for first in doubles with 24. Pulls that one to the right side again. And the first baseman Alonzo ranged a long way to get that. And it forces Kennedy to go over and cover. Side is retired. Three straight ground balls. One of the three hit hard. The other two not so much. We'll go to the second here in Philadelphia.
A five star Thursday is a Citizens Bank business person special, a 105 first pitch. Order tickets now by going to Phillies.com. And there's that bobble figurine, thanks to the folks at Pico that was given out tonight. We go to the top of the second. And it'll be Chase Headley, Yonder Alonzo, and Rene Rivera for the Padres against A.J. Burnett. There's a curveball hit on one hop to Ryan Howard. Just 11 pitches so far for A.J. Burnett. And with one out, Yonder Alonzo's coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, Tom. Well, uh, you know, walks uh, over the past couple of weeks have been an issue. A.J. Burnett and the Phil's defense able to get uh, sidestep the walk in the first inning. But take a look at these numbers because they are eye-opening. In terms of the last 32 games, the Phil's pitchers have walked 134 coming into tonight, 135 now. That's second worst in all of baseball. And their record during that time, 10 and 22. And you compare that to the first 29 games of the season where they were tied for the sixth fewest in baseball, where they had a record above 500. So walks have been an issue over the past month. It is something that the, these guys are aware of and certainly working to, to get better at, but they're going to need to in order to turn that around. Well, you make a great point there, Murph. And walks, as we've seen and wit we've witnessed over the course of the season, have extended innings. Uh, put pressure on the defense force pitchers to throw more pitches. They don't get as deep into the game They they force a lot of negative things to happen in the course of a baseball game And I think we've seen a lot of those examples this year with the Phillies And certainly these guys aren't uh, trying to walk guys uh, at that that rate But um, you know Jimmy when you talk about walks, you know no defense against the walk and and so many times it seems they've let off innings with walks or a two out walk and it's come back to bite the fill. So it is something that that is concerning to everybody involved and that they're uh, that they're working to correct. Yeah I think uh, Murphy talked about it a few weeks ago about you know the the leadoff batters getting aboard whether it be the walks or the the base hits how that's really resulted in a lot of runs. Well, and I, partially you know for me the walk comes from some of it. You're right Tom they don't they don't want to walk people but it's repeating. Repeating uh, your your mechanics as part of it, as we see a fly ball there to Dominic Brown um, for the second out. But you know, it, it's repeating mechanics and be, being consistent with your mechanics. And I think in some situations too, we're trying to pitch away from contact instead of trying to force contact early in the count. We get behind the contact, behind in the count, then we start to nibble, and now you, you find yourself 3-0, 3-1. And you're not able to execute a good pitch and you create the walk. Well, two quick outs for A.J. Burnett. Here's Rene Rivera, the catcher. And he lines one out toward right center field. Here comes Revere. He dives and he comes up with the catch. Little splashdown for Ben Revere. And the final out here in the second inning is recorded on a wonderful yet wet play by the Philly center fielder. Just seven pitches for A.J. Burnett. Number seven was lined. Right into the glove of Ben Revere. We'll go to the bottom of the second here in Philadelphia with our eyes wide in the scoreless.
breaking news on all your Philly teams right now from your smartphone. Download the free CSN Philly Sports app today. Oh, with all the things happening around uh, Philadelphia today, whether it be the Sixers over in Camden with their new practice facility, uh, to Aaron Nola being signed, the first round pick of the Philadelphia Phillies, that's a good app to have at this point. We How about Aaron being here today? Really nice to meet him and listen to him speak and shows genuine excitement to be a, to be a Philly and get started with his pro career. Hey Jeff. I think the thing that was kind of neat was uh, how optimistic everybody was that he might start at Clearwater and then move. I want to say uh, rapidly through the system but they're going to be open minded about his progress in the system too. Well, I think that's good. I mean here's a kid that's out of college. He's it sounds like he's a little more developed than the average college kid. And uh, you know you could tell you know, in his press conference he you know, he has confidence but he's not cocky. Uh, I had a little conversation with his college coach this afternoon and uh, he, he, he could do nothing but brag about uh, Aaron and, and what he brought to his ball club at LSU. But what he thinks he'll bring as, as a professional pitcher to the Phillies organization. Two balls and one strike to Ryan Howard as we start the bottom of the second. Well, we mentioned the Phillies, the first 29 picks, 28 were college players. Including Aaron with the seventh selection overall. We're going to actually be joined by Aaron in just a little bit up here in the booth. So we'll look forward to that. Two balls and one strike to Ryan Howard. Up and in, three and one. Marlon Bird waits on deck. And that's out of play. It's three and two. You wonder what Aaron's college coach is going to do without a NOLA on the roster for the first time in a while. Yeah, I, I wonder if the NOLA family has any relatives that may be uh, looking at LSU. The hands and that'll be out of play. During the 2014 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream. So to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Three balls and two strikes to Howard. And he fights it off. The thing I've noticed so far with uh, Ian Kennedy, when he gets to two strikes, you know, his fastball velocity seems to increase a little bit. I, I, I haven't seen that a whole lot this year with any pitcher. And then, you know, when you're being taught in the minor leagues, you know, when you're going inside or when you're elevating, you know, you're trying to add velocity. The ball is rocketed out towards center, backing up on it is Venable. He makes the catch. Yeah, there's one away. I guess it's that old adage that you know if you're a pitcher that's around the strike zone, you don't always have to be 100% velocity all the time. And Ian Kennedy is part of our Geico quote of the day. And Darren Balsley, the pitching coach, talked about his velocity and how it's up. He's making more of a turn when he kicks his leg. He's developing more torque in his delivery. His arm's in a good slot now. The last couple of years, he was under the baseball a little bit. Which takes off some velocity. Now he's over the ball and throwing it more downhill than he used to. Darren Balsley is an excellent pitching coach for the San Diego Padres and has been for a while. And all that lingo and terminology makes total sense. It allows him to stay over the rubber a little bit longer, allows him to get his hand out of his glove to create that arm circle behind him and behind his body to allow his fingers to get on top of the baseball to create that downward plane to home plate when he's looking for it. That's the key, I think, the downward plane. Well, think about it. If you're underneath the ball and you're advancing the ball towards home plate, the ball's going to stay on a flatter plane. If you're on top of it and your fingers are on top of it, you're creating that downward angle. The ball's moving forward and down at the same time. Which one do you think is going to be easier to hit? That ball's grounded out to shortstop. So five up, five down for Ian Kennedy. There are two outs here in the second. And Dominic Brown is coming to the plate. See right here. Let's take a look. See at him. And picks his leg up. Gets his hand separated. His foot is down. His arm is up. He follows through very well, and he creates that, that downward plane. 
And once you get into that rhythm, it's, it's a fun rhythm to be in. And now it's just a matter of trying to create a tempo early in the game, and he's doing it right now. He's making it look pretty easy. Pretty much throwing all, pretty much all fastballs tonight. Ground ball into the shift. Charging is the second baseman Peterson. And the side is retired. Well, both these pitchers are humming along. That's 21 pitches through two for Ian Kennedy. Meanwhile, 17 through two for A.J. Burnett. We'll come back with the third right after this. First couple of innings. We said there's been a lot going on in Philadelphia today, and earlier today, the Phillies announced that they had signed their first round pick, 21 year old right hander Aaron Nola out of LSU and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, coming off a junior year in which he was 11 and 1 with an ERA of 1.47 in 16 starts. The two time Southeastern Conference Pitcher of the Year. And Aaron's been nice enough to uh, join us up here in the booth. And we appreciate congratulations on signing your big league contracts. Thank you. Thank you all for having me up here today. I, I have to imagine that all of this has been I mean you've pitched in some big games already. But all of this has been some has to be somewhat surreal being you know here and signing getting ready going down to Florida. Yeah this is the first time I've ever been up to Philadelphia and it's been an unbelievable experience. You know when I got drafted by by the Phillies and it was something to remember for me and as a special moment for myself and my family. What are you looking forward to? What, what are you excited about uh, when you get to Clearwater? What's the what do you what, what are you looking that you think is going to be the most exciting part of it? I just I just can't wait to get back on the mound again. You know, it feels like I hadn't pitched in a month. But it's been <laughs> about a week and a half. Uh, you know, throw my first minor league pitch. You know, I've, I've waited to be in the minor leagues and you know see how that is. I have a brother, Austin's in the minor leagues. He's been there for two years now and you know, he loves it. And uh, you know, it's just one step closer to your, your goal, everybody's goal. Who's, hey. who's going to be the first of the big leagues? You got a little bet with Coach <laughs> Coach Maneri? No, uh, he says uh, he doesn't know yet either. But you know, my, my brother and I haven't talked about it. But I'm going to have to call him and mess with him a little <laughs> bit. About it. Well, Jace Peterson just uh, fly out to center field, and Ian Kennedy's coming up. Uh, you know, Aaron, we mentioned that you've pitched in a lot of big games. How much has pitching at LSU think prepared you for this next step that you're going to take? Uh, it's prepared me a lot, especially with the media part of it. You know, going through the whole day today with all this media. You know, I probably had you know six or seven interviews and then the press conference. You know, I've done that, so it's uh, it's not a first time thing for me. And and uh, you know, playing at LSU, you have a lot of fans that come out to the games every game. And pitching in those big games, you have you know. 10, 11, 12,000 people. So uh, that's that's a big thing for me going into the next level. As you see, I mean, there's a lot of people here tonight, uh, and it's not even close to being packed, really, because you know the rain and the weather uh, and all that. But you know, it's that's what makes baseball awesome too, is the fans, the fan support. Uh, they come out and support support the team that they love. So you talked about going to LSU. You wanted to play with your brother, and you said today, I thought it was a great answer. 
you said that it was the best decision you could have made was to go to LSU and not sign right out of high school because you could have signed out of high school. Yeah, talking to Austin, like I said earlier, that he had no regrets going to college. Uh, he loved every bit of it. You know, he was there three years, and you know, he made the decision to go to uh, go back for his senior year. And you know, why not for me go my freshman year and play play with him? And you know, it might be the only chance that I get to play with him. You know, I might I'm now I'm gonna be playing against him. Uh, <laughs> so that'll be pretty cool. But you know, it's going to college has prepared me for you know where I am now and. And it's it's made me a better person, and uh, having those three years under my belt in college is uh, definitely a big help for me. When that day happens, who do you think mom and dad are going to root for? <laughs> we actually talked about that the other day. <laughs> when, when we played each other, when we were going to be playing each other, who they're going to who they're going to root for, or wear the wear a shirt, you know. So I think they decided, you know, wherever you, wherever. You are at whatever park they're going to wear that shirt. So nice. Well, Will Venables, the batter, the count is uh, no balls and well, one ball and one strike to him, and he takes inside. It's two balls and one strike. Aaron, uh, one thing that Ruben talked about today, and we've heard this from the get-go, and those of us that have watched you pitch because we get a chance to see LSU because uh, they're such a popular team. He says you're a strike thrower. Have you always been a strike thrower? I mean, I know that's what every pitcher wants to be. I've been I've been a strike thrower. You know. Pretty good my whole life, and you know, I mean that's that's kind of what's got me here today. Is throwing strikes that might not, that might not be the most overpowering pitcher there is, you know, because I mean you got guys throwing 100, a lot of guys throwing 100 and above 95, but you know at the end of the day it's it's about you know commanding your pitches, commanding your fastball, and that's what you see in the, the big league games and. Uh, and you, of course, you know, commanding all your pitches, you know, it gets you to get you to the top. Well, Will Venable just got a fastball that he took out of the ballpark for the Padres to give them a one nothing lead uh, here in the top of the third inning. So it's the first hit of the day for San Diego. First hit, hit, hit for either team. And that was out over the plate, that fastball right there. Yes, it was. And it looked like it ran out over the plate and allowed Will Venable to get uh, his arms extended. And they got the ball up in the air. It's a little warm tonight. Ball's carrying a little, looks like a little bit to right, right field. Well, here's Everett Cabrera. He takes upstairs. It's one ball and no strikes. He walked his first time up. And hitting 232 overall with three home runs and 11 runs batted in. And you can see right there, Aaron, and when you don't locate, and I'm sure you can talk about this, when you don't locate with your fastball, you know, you usually have negative results. <laughs> and I'm sure that's why you've had the, you know, the success that you've had as a college pitcher. Because you're able to locate your fastball and get ahead in the count, then you can use your secondary pitches, you know, which are chase pitches, right? That's correct. You know, especially at this level, you know, I've watched a lot of major league games, and if you miss a spot, you know, those, those hitters don't don't miss your mistake, and uh, yeah, that's why they're so good and it's so hard to pitch up here. Uh, but you know, I've had my fair share of making mistakes and <laughs> getting a home runs hit and with you there my friend <laughs> <laughs> it happens uh, if you're a pitcher it's going to happen well Aaron, we appreciate you coming on well, thank you. wish you the best of luck we look forward thank to seeing you, you real soon heading to Clearwater tomorrow thank Aaron Nola the number one pick for the Philadelphia Phillies signed sealed and delivered Will Venable is given San Diego a one nothing lead
Subject line. All right, Jamie, which Padre made the last out of two no hitters in the same season? Which Padre made the last out of two no hitters in the same season? Do you know the year? We know it. I will tell you that A.J. Burnett, it was one of his no hitters, if you can envision that. Or his no hitter, not one of his, his no hitter. We go to the bottom of the third. Carlos Ruiz leads it off, takes the pitch low. It's two balls and no strikes to Carlos. I'm not up on my Padres. You know history. this guy, though. I'm sure I know him. Yeah. Does he have a son that played? Or that plays? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think he has a son that plays, but I know where you're headed. Okay. I don't know if his son is old enough to play. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Ruiz. And it's on the outside corner, 2 and 2. I'm trying to think where you would have faced this guy. I mean, you could have faced him in San Diego. There's other teams where you could have faced him, other places. Tim Timmons is behind the plate tonight. Tim Welke, the crew chief, over first. Todd Tishner, Clint Fagan, those are the umpires for this evening's ball game. Carlos chops it over to third. <laughs> Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. By Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 JEP now for an appointment. And by Nissan. Get to your local Nissan store for the ride of your life and save big today. One out here in the bottom of the third, along with Jamie Moyer and Greg Murphy. I'm Tom McCarthy. Good to be back home here in Philadelphia, where Cesar Hernandez will be the batter with one out. Hernandez takes on the outside corner. Boy, his control has been pinpoint to the outside part of the plate. Hey, when you're locked in, that's usually what you get. Again, he's created a good tempo and really established his fastball early in, in this part of the game. Well, his last three starts, he's 3 and 0 with an ERA of 2.00. He has 22 strikeouts during that time in 18 innings of work. If you look, he's gotten seven outs all on contact. He hasn't struck out anybody. So he tells you that he's not afraid to pitch to contact. There's a curveball that's a little high. And it's one ball and two strikes to Cesar Hernandez. And six of his seven outs have come via the curveball. Or excuse me, the, the ground. They're ground balls. There's a curveball and the first strikeout of the night for Ian Kennedy. And there are two outs. And here's A.J. Burnett. Here's that curveball we talked about pregame. Goes top to bottom. Looks like he spikes it. He's got his pointer finger spiked into the top of the ball. Middle finger as you know around the ball as you would with his thumb and, and middle finger, the dominant fingers, with the pointer finger spiked over top of the ball, and he gets that good 12 to 6 action. Kind of throws it the same way AJ Burnett throws one of his curveballs. AJ this year hitting 240, no homers, no RBIs, but he has six hits and 25 at bats. He's behind 0 and 2. And the other thing that Ian's done tonight of the nine hitters he's faced, including AJ here, he's thrown seven first pitch strikes to the nine hitters. So that's a big thing, too. You got to be ahead in the count. You got to get ahead in the count. Curve ball tapped foul at home plate. But I like the way he pitches to contact. It makes a big difference. But he can strike you out if he wants to. Or if if or he if he needs, needs to. to. And he's got a couple different places to go for that strikeout. It's not just one pitch in one location. Brown ball off the end of the bat. Charging is Peterson. Side is retired. So nine up, nine down for Ian Kennedy. is not allowed a base runner through the first three innings here in Philadelphia. We'll go to the fourth. It's the Padres one. And the Phillies nothing.
Dymo LM160 label maker for just $9.99. Visit WBMason.com and order yours now while supplies last. Padres lead it 1-0 thanks to a home run by Will Venable. Venable's first home run since the 11th of May against the Miami Marlins. Seth Smith will lead things off. It'll be Smith, Carlos Quentin, and Chase Headley. And Greg Murphy's with a very special guest. Murph? Yes, I am, Tom, and it's a special night here at the ballpark as once again we're honoring teachers. Say hello to Gina Rexroad, who is part of the Target and People Major League Baseball All-Star Teachers Program. And you are one of the three finalists for the Philadelphia Phillies for a chance to go to the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Uh, tell us how that happened. That has to be pretty exciting. It is very exciting. Uh, you get nominated by um, anybody, can nominate anybody, and then there's a voting process where you go online and you could vote for one of the three finalists. Now, I, you're a third grade teacher in, in, down in Delaware uh, at Leisure Elementary School. I have to imagine when you told your, your students they were pretty excited, how did they react? It is phenomenal to get, walk through the halls of my school in general, and they're saying, Mrs. Rexford, I voted for you. They are very excited. The staff and the district and Christina School District, where I work for everybody has been really supportive so far. Well, so Gina is one of three finalists. Also, Garrett Lyons is a finalist, and Jabari Whitehead, uh, who are also at the game tonight. And uh, it, it, there they were earlier on the field today. And uh, the folks can vote at allstarteachers.com. And uh, really, the idea is to get the vote out for all of you. But... Uh, I guess uh, you're dreaming about a trip to Minnesota, are you not? I would love to go, so vote for me. Gina <laughs> <Peter> Rexroad. <laughs> and uh, you can go online to theallstarteachers.com, guys, and get all the information. But it's a great program, and once again, uh, Major League Baseball honoring teachers for all that you guys do. Because it's a tough gig that you guys have, is it not? It is, and the Phillies have been wonderful to spoil us today while we've been here. It's a, a nice way to honor us, so thank you. Well, it's our pleasure to have you here. Best of luck to you. Best of luck to all the finalists, Tom. So once again, allstarteachers.com. Go on. You can read the profiles of the three finalists for the Philadelphia teachers, one representative from every major league team headed to Minnesota for the All-Star game. Guys? All right, we appreciate that. And there are some vote for Gina signs, just so she knows here at the ballpark tonight. Boy, Garrett looks as if he could still be taught. He looks so young down on the field. <laughs> Major League Baseball's done a great job with uh, this campaign over the last couple of years. I mean, you can go, uh, as Murph said, online and find the different participants, particularly those here in Philadelphia. Carlos Quinton is the batter. He grounded it to a double play his first time up, so he's 0 for 1. One man down here in the top of the fourth. One nothing San Diego and a home run by Will Venable. Outside, one ball, one strike. Well, that home run that AJ has given up is the only hit he's allowed through the first three and a third. Out toward right center field, Marlon Bird ventures back. He has room. Two outs. And Chase Headley's coming up. After last start, AJ was talking about the walks that he had allowed. He said, they're unaggressive walks. I don't care if there's a base open. That's not me. That's putting me in passive mode. It's all my fault. Yeah, and I think sometimes you can fall into that trap as a pitcher. You know, you, you lose some of your aggression, and you're trying to kind of just place the ball in there instead of just throwing the ball to the plate. Again, with good mechanics and with a good thought process behind it. And uh, you, you get a little complacent sometimes. So uh, him recognizing that and, and ma making that adjustment, I think, is, is the most important thing with that. Another one hopper for Ryan Howard over at first. It's the second time Headley's done that. And the side is retired in order. So for the second straight, or for the second time tonight, A.J. Burnett wants a 1 2 3 in.
today by AT&T, mobilizing your world. And by Toyota, where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Bottom of the fourth inning, it's one nothing Padres on a home run by Will Venable. Well, I think everybody was talking about both teams struggling offense coming into this ball game. And so far, both teams are struggling offensively. But both these pitchers are, are moving the ball around pretty good, too. They've located the ball very well. They've changed, both have changed speeds. Uh, but, I, you know, Ian Kennedy has spotted his fastball very well. Um, and we talked to Aaron Nola, the new draftee with the Phillies, the first round pick, talked about the same thing. So, you know, that's an important thing. And, you know, Aaron Nola talked about it, but we're seeing it firsthand tonight with, with at Ian Kennedy. 2-0 to Ben Revere. Revere tapped one back to the mound his last time up. You know, my other thought is, you know, the, the team that's slumping and struggling getting guys on base, you know, especially the guys at the top of the order, guys at the bottom of the order, there's, you know, even though the third baseman's playing in a, a well-placed bunt, it's just like a line drive in a gap. So, you, But you got to get guys on base. You can't win if you don't score. Yeah, particularly the way he's going right now, he hasn't been at all uncomfortable because he's been from the windup the entire time. And it's you know free, and I got to believe right now it's like sitting in a rocking chair. It put some pressure on the defense and the pitcher. That ball is ripped toward right field. Is it high enough? It is off the scoreboard. And Revere on his way to second. Well, that's as good a swing as we've seen from Ben Revere. First hit of the night for the Phils. A double to right. Ben, he, just, he saw a lot of bat. He sees a lot of fastballs, and he's got the barrel of the bat out in front of the plate. He was able to drive it down right through right field line off the wall. So, again, when you're seeing a lot of fastballs, you have to have the ability to adjust to it. And he Ben made a nice adjustment there. All right. So the Phillies' first base hit is a double to start the fourth, and now down one nothing. Rollins wants to drive him in, but he also wants to at least get him over to third. And that ball will get him over to third. Revere goes over with a wild pitch, the seventh wild pitch of the season for Ian Kennedy. It's an interesting stat for a guy that's got really good command. I saw that earlier this afternoon that he had six, and that is now being the seventh. And I thought to myself, you know, for a guy that's down in walks, up in strikeouts, you know, good command. I just thought it was really odd, and he just he spiked the fastball in the dirt. And Rollins pops it up, foul territory, over by the Padres dugout. Headley makes the call and makes the catch. Well, there's one out. Still a third is Ben Revere. When I go back to Ben's first at bat, he got jammed pretty good and hit that little weak, you know, comebacker to, to Ian Kennedy. He made a really nice adjustment there. That ball was a little bit further out over the plate, but he still had to get the barrel of the bat to that ball. Now it's, it's on third base. And we got to somehow find a way. The Phillies need to find a way to get him in. Well, the Padres are conceding the run, just as they were with uh, Rollins up there. Rollins uh, was the subject of a very good story today by Bob Brookover in the Philadelphia Inquirer about his quest for the all time hits record. In Philly's history, and Brookie talked to a lot of people, and you know even about Jimmy's propensity to pop the ball up and stuff like that. Uh, he fouls it off to the third base side. It was a very good article. Talked to Larry Boa, talked to Mike Schmidt, talked to Mike Arbuckle, who is now with the Kansas City Royals. Talked about the, the scout, or excuse me, the instructor in the Phillies organization said that he would never hit on the big league level with that kind of swing. Uh, he lofts it out toward right center. That'll drop for a base hit. Revere started back, and then when he saw it fell in, he came home. It's an RBI single for Utley, and it's a 1 1 ball game. Good chase. 
you know, we, we continually to continuously give Chase credit. But here, credit is due. That was a fastball below the zone. And Chase had one thing in mind. I got to get the ball out of the infield, whether I hit it way high in the air. But I mean, that ball's almost off his shoe tops. He shortens his swing, and he hits the ball in the gap. I mean, this is this guy does. It's amazing. You know, we continuously talk about him, but we, rightly so. We should. He does so many things well. Well, that's 31 RBIs now for Utley. It all began with Revere's double to right field. After Ben hit his first career home run, he said, "You know, I am a line drive hitter. It's just a matter of time. I'm going to hit another one." Well, he almost hit another one, but. He'll take it. Howard takes a slow curve, and that's in there for a strike. It's one and one. What a great shot. Look how low up these bat is. But look where his eyes are. You see his eyes. We don't have our telestrator, unfortunately, tonight, but you see his eyes. They're right where the ball is making contact with the bat. And that's a pitcher's pitch. That's not a hitter's pitch. That's a pitcher's pitch. But again, here's a guy that's prepared. Watching video, watching how he gets people out, what he does in certain situations. And, you know, give Ryan Howard credit here. He takes two fastballs that are down. And he gets himself into a good spot. And he pulls it to right field. That'll get up the over to third at least. And Howard will stop at first. It'll be first to third with one man down. himself into a good count there. He was ahead in the count, two and one. He got a fastball. He had seen two previously. Um, and really, you know, didn't try to do a whole lot with it, but kept it in play, kept it between the white lines, and Chase hustled to third base. This is the pressure we're talking about. I mean, Ian Kennedy has pitched so well recently and had retired the first nine batters that he faced, but this is the first time he's got a little adversity here tonight. You don't sense any panic with it. He went to first pitch cutter to Marlin right there, a little bit off the plate. See if he's willing to chase. Now he tries to throw a fastball that comes back a little bit. Didn't come back quite enough. Right here now, you know, Marlin's in a good situation. He can, he can pick a location. He can pick a pitch. And if he gets it, he can, you know, he can take that Marlin bird swing and try to drive this ball. Hopefully, using the middle of the diamond. Try to get that run home from third. Here's the 2 0 pitch in the dirt, 3 0. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Mets, thanks to Daniel Murphy's two run home run, lead the Brewers 2 0. That game's in the bottom of the third. The Mets, like the Phillies, have really been struggling lately. The Mets have lost six straight, two games ahead of the Phillies for fourth place. But again, only five and a half out. Wondered if Marlon was taken all the way there. Three and zero, a control pitcher, and Ian Kennedy. He decided to take three zero. Well, Tom, when you talk about the Phillies, you know, the struggles that they've had. You know, they're really not that. If you think about it, where we are in the season, they're not that far out. And in the next 33 games, they play the Marlins twice and Atlanta twice. You know, they have this series here against. San Diego. The Cubs are coming in behind in, uh, after San Diego leaves. If they could put together a little bit of a role here, I think they could open their own eyes a little bit and surprise some people here yet in the first half and put them in a good position to be prepared to go into the second half. Marlins sends one of the air to right center field. That's deep. Smith going back. Warning track. Wall. It is gone. A three run opposite field. 
the Phillies have taken the lead. They put a four spot up here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Certainly have put some pressure on Ian Kennedy here in the bottom of the fourth inning. You see pretty much a centered fastball that was slightly elevated. I'm sure it's probably not the pitch that Ian Kennedy was trying to make. But Marlon did what he exactly what he should have been doing. Stay in the middle of the field and, and actually drove the ball to the right the field, right center field. And that made a winner out of Baxter Pierce of Philadelphia. Not only does Baxter have the best name I think we've ever called. But he also won $100 or $200 in the McDonald's home run jackpot. Dominic Brown takes on the inside corner. It's 0 2. Dominic grounded out his first time up. And he taps a 0 2 pitch foul. Well, ben Revere started this inning off with a, with a great double. Uh, Chase follows with a great at bat. Ryan Howard, another great at bat. Again, in, in fastball counts, getting their hits. Really nice inning. Well, two strikeouts now for Kennedy. There's Chase Upley who started the scoring with a single to right center. Kind of interesting there watching Ryan Sandberg. He's had a lengthy conversation with Marlon Bird. Ryan, of course, was a, a Hall of Fame hitter. And it looks like they're just discussing you know, the way he took that ball the other way. Rhino used to do that a lot when he was a player. Yes, he did. Hit a lot of line drives. And played in Wrigley Field where the wind blew out. And, that, and, and I say that in a respectful way. He, he earned every home run he got and every hit he got. But learn how to use the, the elements to his favor. Ruiz takes a curve ball, and it's one ball and one strike. 4 1 Phillies here in the bottom of the fourth. A little low, and it's 2 and 1. As a team, I'm going to believe Padres thinking this game may be over. I mean, that, those are some of the thoughts that are going through your head. Even though because, you try to keep them out. Well, exactly, but it's a constant, you know, it's a battle. You got one guy on one shoulder saying one thing, another guy on the other shoulder saying something else. But it, but that's, you know, again, it's, it's just, it just shows how tough this game can be, not only physically, but mentally. Three balls and two strikes to Ruiz. This has been a heck of an inning for the Phillies offense. Or you have the thought, here we go again. That happens a lot. Out toward right center. They were playing on that way. And Venable makes the catch. Side is retired. Phillies sent seven men to the plate. They score four runs in the inning. Marlon Bird's three run home run capped it off. But it all begins with Ben Revere's double. Then Chase Utley. With an RBI single, Ryan Howard, an excellent at bat to move the runners into the corners. And then Marlon Burr just cleaned off the bases for a three runner shot.
Bank Park. Saturday's a 3.05 start. Then Sunday, it's Chevrolet Father's Appreciation Day. Free Phillies Fedora for men 15 and older. What are your tickets now by going to phillies.com? Jamie, we can't figure out what we're supposed to wear on Friday night. It's retro night, 60s retro nights. Mm. Wig? Long hair? Well, tie dye? Uh, if it was the 80s, I could wear a wig. With, well, I guess we could. I don't know. There were different suggestions made on the road trip. I don't know if you heard them or not. I know you were watching a lot of college baseball. I didn't hear them. Yonder Alonzo is behind 0 and 2. There was a suggestion that we go into L.A.'s closet and wear his current wardrobe, you know, the colorful yeah, shirts. That would work. The other suggestion, and I was not an advocate of this at all, but the other suggestion, and I think this was you know, because you're the elder statesman of the group, that we go into your closet and wear something. I think Matt made that comment. Surprise, surprise. Matt, was it, I mean, Murph, was it Matt that made that comment or did you make that comment? Who made that comment about going into Jamie's closet as far as... Uh, Looking for something to wear for retro night. Do you remember? It was most definitely Matt. Yeah. I would never say that. Fly ball out to right field. Marlon Bird toward the track. And he makes the catch. See, so back then they wore suits. Don't bring up that word suit. I'm just saying. That's what they wore. How about we wear a uniform from the 60s? I don't know. I don't think that'll go over well. No? Okay. I'll stay out, but I'll let you guys decide since I'm the rookie. <laughs> Rene Rivera is the batter. He lined the center his last time up. So he's 0 for 1. Yeah, so whatever we wear on Friday, uh, it's going to be a surprise for, for all of us. Oh, really? Well, no, I mean, we're going to figure it out, but we don't know. So maybe somebody's going to surprise us. No, I've asked around. Scott Brandreth, who. It was his idea to come up with these these great nights here at the ballpark. There's a high chop for the third. Two outs. All Scott said uh, was that we're on our own. <laughs> oh. Okay. I mean, we can wear, wear a blue blazer or one of the plaid jacket or something. I don't know. Platform shoes. They were platform shoes. Or was that the 70s? I, I don't know. I was born in the late 60s. I wasn't born in the mid 60s, big boy. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> I wasn't born in the mid 60s either. <laughs> One ball and no strikes. Jace Peterson. I actually have an idea. I have an idea. One and one to Peterson. Peterson flat out to center. I did this for my uh, my rec basketball team. We had white jerseys, and they wanted to tie dye them, so we tie dye them one night of practice. We're going to get a white Phillies golf shirt, and we're going to tie dye it. What do you think about that? I guess we're on. They hear the bell. Murph, what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I think that'll work. I was going to dress like Don Draper. I was going to wear the hat and the suit. But <laughs> I'll do tie dye. You can still wear the the hat if you want to. I might do that. All right, we're going to have to work on that tomorrow. Two and two to Peterson. Peterson playing second base. Uh, Jed Jerko is the everyday second baseman for the Padres, but he's on the disabled list. As that pitch runs inside. It's three and two. I really like the tempo that AJ's created here in the last couple of innings. I think he's really kind of settled in and making a lot of quality pitches. Over the first. And Ryan Howard, a flip to AJ Burnett. So a one, two, three inning. He's retired seven in a row. And during that stretch, he has five ground ball outs. That's a good sign for AJ Burnett. His team has given him a 4 1 lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth.
So attention high school students who are sophomores juniors during the 2013 2014 school year you could become a Phillies extraordinary scholar by sharing how you are impacting the common good through service. You must have a minimum B average or equivalent. Two winners are honored each month on field prior to a Phillies game. You can go to phillies.com slash scholar to nominate. And the Phillies did honor those two before the ball game. Peter Crossan was honored. He is uh, out of Downingtown West High School. And also Nina Shermer from Notre Dame High School, my neck of the woods, in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Cesar Hernandez bunts toward third, barehanded by Headley, and Hernandez beats the throw. Well, there you go, Jamie. We talked about that at the start of the last inning. You'd like to see something like that. And you get it here in the fifth. They said bunt. What's it do? Puts the defense in play, forces them to make a play. You get a leadoff hitter on with the pitcher coming up. You're going to lay down another bunt. Hopefully get it down. Great bunt here by Cesar. Uses the end of the bat, softens it up. Headley's got to come in to make a bare hand play. And he's got to make a great play to even get the ball to first base. The ball that throws high. Cesar runs pretty well. AJ's going to get this bunt down with a man on second. If they don't overthrow it, it'll be first and third. You got it all laid out. Got to think positive. Well, AJ does not have a sack bunt this year. That's because he's in swing mode. He has six hits. Well, this would be a good time to pick up his first sack bunt. And he bunts it toward first. Picked up on one hop by Alonzo. There's one, and there's two. Wasn't planning on that. No, but. They work perfectly for the Padres. Alonzo, the first baseman, fielded that ball so cleanly. And you know, see what Kennedy did there. He threw a high fastball. And it jumped off the AJ's bat. It actually looked like it hit him right in the barrel, which it jumped off the bat. Alonzo got a great jump, got to the ball, knew he had time at second base, at least gave it a look, but he had looked like he had planned on it the whole way. And knowing that AJ, you know, wasn't going to be able to get down the line as quickly as he normally does. Well, now Ben Revere with two outs. Oh. That ball got away. So that double play off the bat of AJ Burnett goes 3 6 4. Revere doubled his last time, came around to score on a single by Utley. Well, I'm glad that first pitch wasn't a strike because that would have been that was the third pitch of the inning and there were two outs. Would have been a three pitch inning of Ben swung at that. Yeah, it would almost bring him back to where he wants to be. In fact, exactly. it would after a very long fourth inning. Can I ask you a quick question about the trivia? Sure. Was the answer an infielder or an outfielder? Uh, depends on what year he played. Oh. Some years he was an infielder, some years he was an outfielder. Thank you. I cannot tell a lie. Appreciate your honesty, Tom. You're not communicating with a certain Canadian, are you? Is he giving you any help on this one? Just trying to use my brain power here. <laughs> Curveball hit back to the box, fielded on one knee by Kennedy. And for the second time tonight, Ben Revere is retired by the Padres pitcher. No runs, one hit, and nobody left. We go to the sixth inning here in Philadelphia. The Phillies up 4-1.
at a hot bat and delivering for his team's offense when it's needed. Carlos has been consistent in the lineup wherever that location may be each day. In addition to his offense, his defense continues to be there when called upon, handling the pitchers and handling whatever comes his way. He takes a beating and comes back stronger each time. And his resiliency is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Carlos has been very good this year uh, defensively for the Phillies and pretty steady offensively. In fact, over the last couple weeks, you know, the, the pitchers have, have struggled holding runners on, and he's kind of tinkered with his mechanics to be a little quicker to second, and it's paid off. Well, anything to help, and again, it's a contribution. Uh, but you know, Carlos, again, he's, he wants to be back there. He's going to try to find to win at all costs. And Kennedy starts off the sixth. He takes a pitch inside, a breaking ball that didn't break. But it's one ball and no strikes. Fly ball to shallow right. Eight in a row retired by AJ Burnett. Alex Torres, a left hander for the Padres, is starting to throw in their bullpen. Not totally sure why, considering Kennedy just hit. Maybe they're just preparing in case Kennedy gets into trouble in the bottom of the sixth. Eight ground outs and only one strikeout for A.J. Burnett. He's pitching to a little contact here. High with a fastball, it's one and zero to Will Venable. Wow, that's a good pitch right there. Nice changeup. Pitch that we haven't seen a whole lot tonight, or much recently in his previous starts. There's a difference right there between that two seam fastball away and the ball that Venable hit out. The ball that Venable hit out kind of was up and out over the plate, running back over the plate, where that two seamer there was down, running off of the plate. Another changeup. Well, it's now time for you to tweet your photo. Using hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. You and Matt do any of that while I was gone? I thought you guys were going to do that. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we were hoping that you were going to send send one from uh, from TCU yesterday during that college game. Yeah, I could have done that. Or even Sunday. It was a three game series. Yeah, it was. That looked like an unbelievable facility. Jamie's uh, son Hutton and the Pepperdine. Uh, ball club were locked in a three game series in the super region against TCU. Rollins backhands flips on the run, not in time to get the speedy Venable. That infield hit, it's the first hit since Venable's home run. For those of us who have not gone to a quote unquote big time college atmosphere, that looked like a big time atmosphere. It was sold out 50, about 5,200 people all three days. Um, Mostly uh, Horn Frog fans, TCU Horn Frog fans. Uh, they were very nice people, very great, uh, very welcoming. It was a great series to watch, and uh, I've never been in, in that type of a venue for college baseball. And it's fun to be a part of, and a great experience for both both teams that went through that. Unfortunately, the waves fell short. Right at the end, too, TCU took the lead in their half of the ninth inning. Uh, they brought in a kid. On TV, it looked like he was throwing 100. I don't know how hard he was throwing, but he um, was throwing hard. I'm guessing if there's a team out there that's looking for a closer real soon, he might be that guy. No balls in one strike. I don't know that many teams draft closers, but the, the, this kid, it's legit. He was 96 to 99. 
with a slider. With a slider. Well, TCU advanced to Omaha for the College World Series. A one pitch. And Cabrera takes outside. One ball and one strike. One out here in the top of the sixth inning. And actually, one of my son's teammates, Aaron Brown, was the Phillies' third round pick. You know, they've gotten a very nice player. Uh, pitch left handed pitcher, center fielder. Um, Drafted actually, as a center fielder, though, right? Yeah. Day two, started the game, went uh, seven innings. And oh, by the way, late in the game, uh, made a great throw from center field and threw out a potential uh, go ahead run at the plate. All I know is that yesterday, uh, they didn't want him to come to the plate. He had a chance to come to the plate, but the last out was recorded. Very good athlete, good baseball player, a lot of tools, can run, he's got some power. Um, he had, I think, 13 home runs. He actually hit a home run in this series opposite field to left field. There were seven home runs hit out of that ballpark this year by right handers, and he hit one out left handed. Chopper foul remains one ball and two strikes. Oh, and by the way, I think he was 13 and one as a pitcher. Yeah, his numbers were very good <laughs> as a pitcher. 13 and one counting the postseason. Yeah. So you throw Aaron Nola in the mix. Another Aaron, Aaron Brown. So they probably got. I'm sure they got more than two, but uh, two that I know of really good uh, picks in the first three picks. Venable close. Venable has stolen only two bases this year. Last year he stole 22. He was the MVP of the Padres a season ago, and they didn't have a great year, so they put him on the media guy, the cover of the media guy. Two balls and two strikes. Did he go? Yes. As the third base umpire, Cabrera's down on strikes. Clint Fagan is the third base umpire. And there are two outs. Here you see a side view. Pretty close. But obviously, he saw Clint saw what he needed. Rung him up. AJ Burnett will take it. That's only his second strikeout. So now Seth Smith, who reached on an error by Howard and then grounded out to second. Smith is hitting 353, lifetime against the Phillies. And he takes a strike. It's 0 1. As I recall, Seth is a kind of a slashing type of hitter with a little bit of power, but he takes what you give him. And you got to respect his power. I think he's a smart hitter. I felt like he always hit me well. I don't feel like I ever had a really good read in facing him. Fly ball left field. Rollins is out. Brown coming in. I don't think Brown saw it right away. And now he's got it. And the sign is retired. No runs, one hit, and one man left. AJ Burnett is for six innings so far with 69 pitches. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth, and Jimmy Rollins will lead it off.
by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And by WB Mason, you can't go wrong when you buy right. Bottom of the sixth inning, Center City. Still a little cloudy, a little haze. Some showers in the area. Boy, did it rain before. We showed you the pictures of how the outfield looks. But they got the field ready, and nobody's really splish, splish, splashing around out there. I thought maybe we'd see some standing water, none whatsoever. Mike Bookholder and his crew did a great job getting everything ready. Jimmy Rollins will lead it off. Rollins takes a curveball. It's 0 1. Rollins is one of three active players who is first or second in career hits for his current franchise. Derek Jeter, 3,370 hits. Rollins, 2,230. And David Wright with 1,631. Jeter and Wright are both first. Jimmy is four hits away from tying Mike Schmidt, five from establishing a new record. Up high, three and one. You know, in time we talk about these kids that are being drafted, you know, whether it's by the Phillies or any other ball club, it's it's such a I gotta believe it's such a difficult task trying to project what these kids are gonna project into. You're seeing them as a high school kids, college kids, haven't played competitively with a wooden bat. And oh, by the way, they're going to have to play in the minor leagues, uh, 100, you know, full season minor league season, 142 games. And if you make it to the big leagues, you have to play 162 games and then add some 30 games in spring training to that. Chopper right side. And Peterson throws out Rollins, one away. It, well, it's time now for Jeep Stuck the Fans trivia quiz answer. And Jimmy, here's the question: Which Padre made the last out of two no hitters in the same season? Well, this guy was a very good college baseball player at Cal State Fullerton, and his name is. Well, okay, we're going to give somebody, some folks a little bit of a hint. Here you go. We we'll flash back to AJ Burnett's no hitter with the Florida Marlins, and there he is. That would be Phil Nevin. Phil Nevin is correct. He was retired by AJ Burnett. In 2001, and Bud Smith, who was a Philly for a period of time. No hitter by AJ. He walked nine, struck out seven through 128 pitches. Bud Smith was in the Scott Rowland trade. He never really amounted to anything with the Phillies after he was with the St. Louis Cardinals. No balls and two strikes. Again, is trying to project out what a how a player is going to contribute to a ball club. Well, I think that projection part of it. I don't think there's an exact science. Some scouts are better than others, obviously. But I, I would think it, it's very uh, frustrating at times, very gratifying at times, but just very difficult. Knowing the makeup of people, I think, helps. But it's still not the final answer. But uh, I think that does help. And you know, you got to have some passion. You got to have some hunger. You got to be willing to work. You got to be willing to be dedicated to, to your to your craft. You know, and these are scouts you're seeing right here, and you know they're they're and they're trying to figure all that out just by watching. They're also trying to project if there happen to be deals made with the Padres and the Phillies, will they help their team? Mm -hmm. If they're still in the race. It's like going to the vet, taking your sick animal to a vet, and the, and the animal can't talk. The vet's got to try to figure it out. But there's an education that goes with that. Sure. Got to project how big a player is going to be. And you throw injuries in there, repetition. You know, baseball is a very repetitious sport, and it, it wears you down. And there's so many other variables outside of the game that can affect it as well. well you got two former number one picks facing each other here. Ian Kennedy was the number one pick of the Yankees in 2006. Chase Utley was the top pick of the Phillies out of UCLA. Kennedy was out of USC. Utley was out of UCLA. 
pulled back toward the middle of base hit. So UCLA wins this battle again. And that leaves now two for three. On Friday, June 27th, the uh, bobbleheads will not be in attendance. At least they won't be wearing bobbleheads. That's where the Phillies take on the Braves. There'll be an Xfinity fireworks show post game. Saturday, the 28th, is the day night doubleheader. Sunday, the 29th, the great giveaway. It's the Rothman Institute, Dominic Brown jersey, free to fans, 14 and under. Tickets can be purchased at any time by going to Phillies.com. You ever think about a bobblehead using a phone? No. <laughs> Because the bobble had taken a, a selfie <laughs> with a GoPro. Ryan Howard takes it inside. It's one ball and one strike. It takes a lot of time and effort to be a big fan. To have a big head and be a big fan. Lines one toward right center field. That'll be in for a hit. Utley will go on the third. Smith gets to it quickly. And again, the Phillies have first and third, just as they did the last time Utley and Howard combined. And Marlon Bird is coming up. Marlon in his 10 home run his last time up the opposite way. Now it's 37 runs batted in, which is second to Ryan Howard for the team lead. And here is that that home run. Here you just see a fastball that leaked back over the middle of the plate. It's kind of right into Marlin's swing, and we've seen Marlin hit several home runs to right center field this year. That one is scalded out towards center. Venable will get to it. Help the tag. He'll score, and the Phillies lead it 5-1 as Marlin Bird has four RBIs. You, things look a whole lot better when you play real sound baseball like the Phillies have offensively these last few innings. And again, it doesn't look like anybody's trying to do too much at the plate. Just try to simplify things and use the bigger part of the diamond. So Utley has scored a couple runs. Bird has driven in four. Dominic Brown fouls one away. Dominic is 0 for 2. He's grounded out and he is struck out. It's sharply on one hop. Chase Headley, the third baseman, is over there to make that play. 5 3 on the putout. Side is retired. The Phillies do get another run on a sack fly by Marlon Bird. Marlon has four RBIs. The Phillies lead it 5 1. We finished up six. We're on our way to the seventh inning here in Philadelphia.
for your local Honda dealers game summary. Marlon Bird is part of the storyline with four RBIs. So is A.J. Burnett. He's scattered two hits over six so far. Only run for the Padres is a solo home run by Will Venable in the third. So we start the seventh, and A.J. Burnett will face Carlos Quinton, Chase Headley, and Yonder Alonso. And Quinton lines one to left field. That'll go to the wall, and that'll be an extra base hit. Although he doesn't run all that well, and he just barely got in there. I was shocked that there was a play. Very good throw by Dominic Brown. Second double of the year for Quinton. And that ends an 0 for 17. Actually, an 0 for 22 for Carlos Quinton. It was a little closer than I think he thought. Closer than even I thought when I called it. Wow. Well, now Headley who's grounded out twice on one hop to Ryan Howard. First pitch is on the outside corner, 0 and 1. Headley's got 161 at bats and he's hitting under 200. He's getting off to a really slow start this year. I really like what AJ's done tonight with his changeup too. He's mixed in a fair amount of changeups to offset his, his curveball. Didn't say anything, and even asking where that pitch was. That's a pretty good two seamer right there. Too close to take. One ball and two strikes. Curve ball whacked to the right side. Quinton will get over to third. Hey, there's one out here in the seventh. These lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They were to see the prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizens Bank, good banking is good citizenship. Tom, you think maybe Matt was one of those people in that taking that selfie in that picture? I think Matt could have been. <laughs> well, I saw a picture that Matt sent from Canada. Oh, so I okay. He's been known to drive, but I, I don't know. Well, there's no telling. Yeah. I don't know. He would. I think he'd put it on if we asked him to. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to Yonder Alonso. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, these two cats. Uh, every time there's a bobblehead night, they come in costume. Fly ball to center. That'll get a run home. Then Revere will make the grab. Quinton will tag from third. And it's a 5-2 ball game. Sack fly. Phillies will trade the out for the run. Because now the bases are empty with two men down for Rene Rivera. Well, and the other good thing about AJ tonight, he's done this very economically. He's at 76 pitches. Uh, with two outs here in the seventh inning. Uh, you know, he's got a good chance to get through the eighth and maybe even finish the ninth. That's Kevin Quackenbush warming up of the bullpen. Now that's a name. Two as Rivera fouls a breaking ball back. Fly to center in the second and grounded out. A chopper over to third his last time up. Reaches out, pokes it towards shallow left. Here comes Dominic Brown and he makes the catch. I think he was battling the lights as he was coming in. 
He stumbled to the ground as he pulled it in, and the side is retired. One run on one hit. Nobody left. Time to stretch. Dominic Brown was doing some stretching of his own to finish up the top of the seventh inning. Park tonight for the Phils. They lead it five to two as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Five runs on seven hits, one error for the Padres, two, three, and zero. And Carlos Ruiz will lead it off against Ian Kennedy. Carlos is 0 for 2. He's grounded out. He's also fly to center. First pitch is over. It's 0 and 1. Two balls and one strike to Carlos. There's a breaking ball that's a little high, three and one. Cesar Hernandez is on deck. Padres are basically at Ian Kennedy's number. What they've averaged per game offensively behind him this year. 11 starts prior to this one. 26 runs scored on his behalf. And that's not even uh, runs when he's in the game. It's runs when he's pitched in a, in a game. Could be when the bullpen's in. So they average about two and a half runs per game for him. And tonight they have two. Hence the five and six record with the very good ERA. Mm -hmm. Carlos lifts it to a shallow center. Everett Cabrera is out and he'll make the call and the catch. As promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Sandy Pfeffer provides this shot. A little fanatic dangle hat. That's a cool shot outside Citizens Bank Park. Just as they're ready to get inside, you can see the left field gate. You see the lineup cards sort of in the background. You can tweet your photo to hashtag using hashtag Philly fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Burnett's in the on deck circle. We mentioned that Deekman is warming up in the pen. That 
Hits it softly to second base. And A.J. Burnett will indeed bat. I think the only way he wouldn't have is if the Phillies got a runner in scoring position. Then they may have pinched it. Well, yeah, his pitch count's so low that he's got a three run lead. I do agree with you, Tom. Being prepared is important as well from the managerial standpoint. And I think that's what they were thinking about. You sure they don't want to give away opportunities uh, you know, when you have a club that has been struggling at times to score runs. Outside one ball one strike to Burnett. He's grounded out to second and he butted into a double play his last time to the plate. Side, it's two and two. Wackenbush Bush is the right hander. Patton is the lefty for the Padres. And a breaking ball and a call. Strike three. Phillies go down in order in their half of the seventh inning. A.J. Burnett will go back to work in the eighth when we return to Citizens Bank Park. Visit your local Delaware Valley Honda dealer or shophonda.com. Buy McDonald's any size hot or iced coffee is just one dollar. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And buy the Quality Plus Ford stores. Go further. Phillies are on top five two as we go to the top of the eighth inning. It's time now for our Hyundai defensive play of the game. Phillies have had a couple pretty good defensive plays here tonight. This one was provided by Ben Revere. Yeah, nice play by Ben. He got a good beat on the ball and laid out nicely in the soft, wet grass. Pulled that ball in for the Hyundai defensive play of the game. You get a little jealous of Matt, aren't you? Uh, he would be proud of me. <laughs> Ben's made a nice play tonight. Dominic Brown's made a nice play tonight. But tonight belongs to A.J. Burnett as we go to the top of the eighth inning. He leads at five to two. 
He's thrown just 79 pitches. And Jace Peterson will lead things off. Swing to the first pitch, and it's 0 1. Tony Medica is in the on deck circle. There are the pitches by inning for AJ. There's a two seamer up high. Peterson is fly to center. He's also grounded out to first. Swing and a miss, boy. That's a good pitch. That's a curveball from AJ, and it's down in the zone. It starts down in the strike zone and then goes down even farther. Carlos sets up and gets him a nice good target, gives him something to throw at. AJ throws it right off his glove and it breaks down out of the bottom of the zone. And then he comes back with that off the body sinker. Deekman's warming up in the bullpen for the Phillies. Two balls and two strikes. And he tried that breaking ball again. It's three and two. When he's able to change the location of it to down and in, but below the zone to try to get him to swing over it or to top it to Ryan at first base. Or pull it foul to Murph. Murph's ready for it. You're ready for it, aren't you, Murph? I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, he went around. Yes, he did, says the home plate umpire, Tim Timmons. I know you're ready, Murph, but it probably prefer to strike out there also. And yeah, we'll take that instead. One man down. And that curveball sets up this fastball in, and he can't hold back. Although, if you look where Carlos set up, he missed, he missed that is his location, the complete other side of the plate, but it worked. AJ has a handful of one, two, three innings today. In fact, he has three. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team, one, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Cameron Maven is going to be the pinch hitter for the Padres and not Tony Medica. Maven, a 291 hitter, a home run and three runs batted in. Does have good numbers against the Phillies. At this ballpark. He's a big, strong kid. He likes the ball on the plate. Get him to chase balls off the plate, below the zone, and when he gets behind, you can elevate on it too, but you got to get it way up there. Outside, 2 0. Oh. This kid was a, a promising prospect with the Marlins when he first came up to the big leagues. And uh, for some reason or other, he fell out of favor and was involved with the trade over here to the Padres. Side ball four, so he just walked him on four pitches. The one out base runner. Will Venables coming up, and it's time for the Major League Notebook. Murph? All right, thanks, Tom. Brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy University. And the Pirates had some rosters shuffling today. They placed Neil Walker, their second baseman, on the disabled list after an emergency appendectomy. So he'll be out for a little bit. But they also called up their top prospect, Gregory Polanco. Polanco was in the lineup tonight, batting second in his Major League debut. And he did get a base hit in the third inning for Polanco. He is a highly touted prospect. And the Mets, they continue to struggle. And... They kind of made some news today. Their general manager, Sandy Alderson, saying that Matt Harvey will not pitch this season at all. Of course, he had Tommy John surgery back in uh, late October, and uh, they are not going to rush him back. And why would they? Uh, he is one of their top prospects. Uh, so he'll recover, and the next time we will see Matt Harvey on a major league mound is in the year 2015. Guys? All right, Murph, we appreciate that. A.J. Burnett has been lifted from this ball game here in the eighth inning. With a runner at first, Jake Deekman's going to come on to face Will Venable. We'll be back right after this.
to its premium features on his favorite smartphone or tablet are perfect for Father's Day. Dad will have access to features such as live look-ins, instant replay, live audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and much more. For more details, visit MLB.com. All right, A.J. Burdett's been lifted from this ball game, even though he hadn't reached 90 pitches. I can't imagine he's too pleased about being taken out with a runner at first base and one man down here in the eighth, nursing a three-run lead. But Ryan Sandberg goes to Jake Diekman to face Will Venable, but now it's Chris DeNorfia who will pinch it for Venable. And the first pitch is inside. It's 1-0. Three hits, two walks. Looked like he was... Pretty comfortable, but Phillies they need a victory. Everybody's seemingly well rested. Ryan Sandberg deciding he's not going to fiddle around here. He's going to try to go after it and get Deekman to get these last couple outs. Well, AJ did his job. He got him deep enough into the game and he got into the eighth inning. Held the Padres to two runs. That is his run at first. I don't think it's going to matter. Positive thinking, Tom. <laughs> well, the last time you had some positive thinking, there was a double play from a bunt. I'd love to see that again. I don't think this is a bunting situation. Oh, yeah. About a four to six to three. That would work too. One ball and two strikes. Got him. High fastball, 98 on the gun. And there are two outs here in the eighth inning. And Everett Cabrera will come up. See a good fastball up and out over the plate. And it's it's hard to cover that fastball that could potentially be in and away like that at 98. It was a four seam fastball, by the way. 99. Anybody for 100? Let's stay at 99. I like that. Cabrera is 0 for 2. He's walked, grounded out, and struck out. Oof. I don't know. That looked 100. Back to back 99 mile an hour fastballs from Deepman. Oh, the problem is if we hit 100, then we expect 100. And I don't like that. Right? Just once, though. There you go. All right, I expect it again, right yeah. here. <laughs> One ball and two strikes to Everett Cabrera. AJ Burnett looking on. And the pitch. Slider swung on and missed. How about 86? Back to back strikeouts for Deepman. He looked explosive in this outing. Second strikeout, fifth overall for Phillies pitching. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth with the Phillies leading at 5 2.
retro night here at Citizens Bank Park. Now, both teams, the Cubs and the Phillies, will wear 64 uniforms. The 1964 alums will also be on hand. There'll be a lot of 60s entertainment out at Ashburn Alley, plus characters, music, and pop culture. Order your tickets now by going to phillies.com. Cameron Raven stays in the ball game to play center field for the Padres. Chris Denorfia had come out to play right field, and Seth Smith had moved to left, but then they flip-flopped it again. Quinton stayed in, Smith went back to right. And Troy Patton will be the new pitcher. Patton is uh, in limited action, a 3.38 ERA. He'll face Ben Revere, Jimmy Rollins, and Chase Sutton here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Mayor takes it on the inside corner. It's 0 and 1. Now Ben's 1 for 3, but the 1 was a double. That kind of knocked Ian Kennedy, knocked Ian Kennedy off rhythm. He had retired nine straight to start the game before Revere's double the right. Scored on a single by Utley, who then scored. On a three run home run by Marlon Bird and a four run fourth. That one's out toward left center. Maven is not going to get there. The Revere is two for four. There's Jonathan Papelbon, who has not been in a safe situation since the 24th of May. That's crazy. That is a long time. Over two weeks. He's been sitting at 299 career saves since that time. Takes his lead off first. And that one is sliced the other way. A base hit. Revere will stop at second. That'll put runners on first and second with nobody out. And Jimmy Rollins inches closer to Mike Schmidt. That's 2,231 hits. He's three away from tying Mike for the franchise record and four away from wiping that clean and starting a new one. There's Chase, who is two for three tonight. Let's raise his average up to 319. how Chase took that slider almost like he thought it was going to hit him. I think that's a deke. He wants it again. Oh yeah. Maybe not tonight. Somewhere else in the series. He just got it again. That's off the glove and scooped up by the shortstop who tries to tag Rollins. He missed him. Throws to first and Utley safe at first. So everybody is safe. Rollins kept on running. Cabrera made a nice play fielding that one. And the second base umpire, Todd Tischner, immediately called him safe. I think it's the right call. So he takes the ball out of his glove. Already out of his glove, but he missed him anyway. See, Todd Tishner called it right away. This is a good shot right here. This will tell us. See, the ball is out of the glove, and he didn't even get him. <laughs> Great job by Rollins to avoid that tag. And a good call by the second base umpire, Todd Tishner. 
So Revere's at third, Rollins is at second, and Utley's at first. It's actually a pretty good dig for the shortstop. Umpire's got his back to his back. Unless he asks for help from the first base umpire. Well, Tim Welke signaled to him, said, did he ask him, did he go under it? And he went, yes. He said, okay. So now Ryan Howard with the bases loaded. Welke is the crew chief. They call it E6 fielder's choice. Takes outside. Ryan Howard has 12 career grand slams. Ground ball foul, and it's one ball and one strike. So they're going to play the infield in, but now they have three guys on the right side of the diamond with the infield in. They just shifted around. Mario Hollins has now started to throw in the pen for the Phils. Popped him up. Foul territory. Long run for Headley over toward the Padres dugout. It's out of play. Headley's playing. Ben Revere can pretty much take whatever type of lead he wants at third base. Headley's uh, only he's kind of in the hole between shortstop and third base. No signals from Chase though to tell him to extend that lead a little <laughs> bit more. He walks down the line. Outside. Oh boy. Outside corner. I guess. One out. If you're looking where Rene Rivera catches that ball, it's not a strike, but you can't, it's really hard to tell if that ball crossed the corner of the plate. Well, that's a tough strike right there. Bud Black comes out to take Patton out of the ball game, so the bases remain loaded. They'll bring in the right-hander to face Marlon Byrd. So we've got another pitching change here at Citizens Bank Park with the Phillies on top, 5-2. And can discuss your tweet 
on Philly Sports Talk, presented by Comcast Business, weeknights at 5 on Comcast Sportsnet. Home half of the eighth inning with one man down. The Phillies have the bases loaded. And Kevin Quackenbush will come on for the Padres. One win, one loss, a 3.07 ERA. And he's on the face, Marlon Bird. All right, the Phillies are looking for an, an additional insurance run. They lead it by three. One more run, it's no longer a safe situation. Revere's at third, Rollins is at second, and Utley's at first. Marlin has four RBIs tonight. Second time this year he has picked up four RBIs. Pitches upstairs, one ball and no strikes. I think they got crossed up right there. I think they might have. Rene Rivera was looking for uh, probably an off speed pitch, maybe that curveball away. Quackenbush has a fastball, curveball, and a split fingered fastball. I think he was looking for something away, and Quackenbush threw a fastball up. He's lucky he caught that. You now, Tim Timmons is lucky he caught that because he would have wore that right in the mask. That's a good point, too. A 1 0 pitch. Foul the way off to the right. With Bird's home run earlier, one tree will be planted by the Pennsylvania Order Cultural Society as part of Home Runs for Trees. A partnership between the Phillies, PHS, and Aramark. Home Runs for Trees is part of a project to restore the region's tree coverage. For more information, visit phillies.com. Slash red goes green. Sort of laid in a hanger there. One ball and two strikes. That was curveball. Sometimes you get away with those. Unfortunately, he got away with that one. I guess when you're expecting something else, drastically something. Well, else. I don't know. You know, Marlins. How many times he's seen Quackenbush? Again, we're playing the, the Phillies are playing a team they don't see a whole lot. Same way with uh, Diekman and their hitters. Ramirez is at third. Rollins is at second. Utley taking his lead off first. Like they're trying to tie Marlin up in with two strikes. I don't know if they're trying to elevate it or just get it in. And he's trying to elevate it if he can. Yes, he is. Infield is halfway for the Padres. The base is loaded. Out another one off. Played the infield all the way in. One ball, two strikes to Bird. It's a pretty good battle. This is a so far it's been seven pitches. Marlon has fouled six of those seven off. It tells me his curveballs is out pitch. We haven't seen the split yet. 
There's curveballs is out pitch tonight. That got a piece of Rivera. There's the curveball again. That one at 76 miles an hour. Bird on a high fastball. And there are two outs. Well, don't forget this Sunday when the Phillies wrap up their homestand against the Chicago Cubs, all fans 14 and under will receive the Dominic Brown jersey. It's compliments to the Rothman Institute. Tickets can be purchased anytime by going to Phillies.com or stop by the box office during this homestand. Well, and you see how the curveball sets up the high fastball because the fastball comes right out of that same slot. And it's almost as if he was expecting another curveball. Well, I think Marlon was just trying to protect and get something that he could just get in the air over the infield or deep enough to an outfielder to get that run in from third. I'm sure he's not feeling real good about not doing his job at that point. Oh, and two to Brown. Man overshift with Brown at the plate. Tries a curveball again. It's two and two. Well, they do shift a lot. They shift it against uh, Howard, of course. Brown, Utley. That's the thing to do nowadays. Swing and a miss. Brown is struck out. So three straight strikeouts after the Phillies loaded up in the bottom of the eighth inning. So it means that Jonathan Papelbon will be brought on to try to pick up career save number 300 when we return. When last year I spent more money on still liquor in my. Mark. You see the line score. Philly scored four of the fourth inning, added one of the six. They had a chance to blow it open in the eighth, but instead it remains a safe situation as we go to the top of the ninth inning. 
And for Pap, it's the first save opportunity since the 24th of May. Those are his numbers. He's 13 for 14 in save opportunities. And Murph, this is a pretty special milestone for a closer to get to this level because if he gets it, he ties a Hall of Famer. It, it, it's really kind of remarkable when you step back and look at the numbers for Jonathan Papelbein. As you mentioned, it's been 17 days since he's had a chance to get a save opportunity, but looking for number 300 right now, he would be just the 26th player in Major League Baseball history to do that. If he moves, uh, gets 300, you'll see there Jason Ingrid, Isringhausen, and Bruce Suter, the Hall of Famer, both with 300. And not to mention that, Tom, he'll become the third youngest player ever to reach 300 saves. And in terms of games, gets there the second fastest behind only Trevor Hoffman on that list. So it is very impressive indeed if he's able to get it done tonight. Yeah, look at the names even that are right ahead of him. Of course, Suter and Goose Gossage, both Hall of Famers. Seth Smith will lead things off here in the top of the ninth. First pitch is over. It's 0-1. And guys, it is remarkable that it's, and I guess this is telling as to how the Phillies have struggled but it's been since the 24th of May since his last save opportunity that, that's remarkable all by itself split outside one and one. Seth Smith is uh, 0 for 3 reached on an error his first time up grounded out and then fly to left. Challenged of 92 with a high fastball, one and two. Well, being able to move the fast, get a, get, getting ahead, and then being able to move that fastball around, especially after a split or a slider or a curveball. You saw Quackenbush do that with his fastball and his curveball, and right there you saw Jonathan do it with the split and his fastball. Out of play over the third base dugout. You see how effective it can be with different pitches. But it's all about locating your fastball. Everything which, works off your fastball. Which he's done, aside from let's say his first couple of outings, he's done that the entire year. He's done it very well, very consistently. Off the end of the bat, and Smith stays alive. Seth Smith has been the best hitter for the Padres this year, hitting over 300 coming in. His average has dipped under that with his 0 for 3 tonight. And I think what happened in the beginning of the season with Jonathan, he had a little bit of a mechanical flaw. And it, it took him a little bit to figure it out. He was underneath the ball, he was pushing the ball, he didn't have his location, and he figured it out. Found his location, and the rest is history. And that's why he's going for his 300 save tonight. Three and two. Carlos Quinton is on deck. And a line drive toward right field. Bird on the run, and he can't get it. It's beyond his glove and off the scoreboard. Smith will rumble to second and he'll get there standing. So that's his 15th double of the year. He's in scoring position. Coming up after the ball game, it's Philly's post game live. It's presented by Cure Auto Insurance. You get Ben Davis's analysis of this ball game. Not only the outing by A.J. Burnett, but all the positive things the Phillies did tonight. They did leave three in the bottom of the eighth inning, but they did a lot of good things offensively, particularly early on. And now they're trying to lean on Jonathan Papelbon to save it. Carlos Quinton is next up. One for five lifetime against Papelbon. Well, 
when you, you think about what Quackenbush did in the in the bottom half of that last inning, with coming in with one out and bases loaded and getting out of that jam, has to give the Padres a feeling that they can get back into this game with, you know, one more hit gets them back into the game, two more hits, you know, who knows where that goes. Chopper to third, Hernandez didn't peek the runner back, but didn't have to. One out. So Quinton's retired. Here's Chase Headley. Headley only two at bats lifetime against Papelbon. He's 0 for 2. Nobody really has uh, an overwhelming amount of at bats against Papelbon. I thought Quinton might have more than the five. And the only reason I say that about Quackenbush is that in this game you never take anything for granted. Absolutely. You're, you know, especially in this ballpark, you're always in the game. I think the biggest at bat was the bird one because it was such a long at bat. First pitch is inside, one to know. And he was fighting with Bird. You know, he's throwing one curveball after another, but then got him to go after that high fastball. You know, and then how many times you hear the hitter say, "Hey, just give us a chance, give us a chance." Well, that's what that's what he's doing. That's what he's done. He's given the Padres a chance. Way two and up, trying to get on a roll over on one with that splitter, and it just sailed outside. Over to the right side, Utley ranging, dives, he's got it, tries to get his grip on it, and everybody is safe. First and third with one man down, and the tying run is coming to the plate. Now that's what you're talking about, Jamie, about that bases loaded situation. If you're the relief pitcher, you don't give in, and now the, the Padres have a chance to tie it. With Smith over third and Headley at first. And yonder Alonso coming up. Now pregame, this is one of the guys who was doing the belly flops in the tarp, wasn't it? Uh, no, no, it was uh, Grandal. Oh, not bad. Although I'm sure most wanted to try to do it. Under Alonzo, uh, since the third week of May, has hit five home runs. He hadn't homered in about a year until he hit his first of the season. He's hit five now in the last few weeks. No balls in one strike. Phillies a double play depth. 0 oh and 2. Fastball here, you think it's split? Thinking something down to go up. You don't want to give him anything he can get the barrel of the bat on right here. The 0 2 pitch. 
he went up with a fastball. It's one and two. Talked about command of the fastball. He's kind of been up and down with it in this outing. As I mentioned, he hasn't worked a whole lot. He did work an inning during the Red Series. Talking to Major League Scoreboard, the Rockies are leading the Braves, or the Braves are leading the Rockies, excuse me, 7 3. On Drelton Simmons hit a grand slam out in Colorado. That game is long from over, though. Ten runs in the first three innings out there. That ball got a piece of Ruiz. Two on with one out, the tying run at the plate. Carlos is rocking all over back there. Rene Rivera, the catcher, is on deck. I gotta believe Alonzo is looking for a fastball here. The runners take their lead in 3 2. Swing and a miss. He got it with a slur. The breaking ball. And there are two outs. Actually, that may have been the splitter. It's just that it was so different than all the other splitters. Let's watch it. It actually did what it was supposed to do. The other ones kind of that were away kind of ran away. That one right there, the bottom dropped out. Oh, that's a splitter, yep. yep. Yeah, his slur will go across almost and down. So now two outs. Runners on first and third. Papelbon, one out away from recording his 300th career save. Also give it the Phil's a chance to get a win here. A much needed win at home. Uh, the pitch to Rivera in there for a strike. It's 0 1. <laughs> Rivera tonight is 0 for 3. Lined out, grounded out, flied out. Field is back. Runners lead off first to third in the 0 1 pitch coming for Papelbon. Just off the outside corner. Swing and a miss. That was his breaking pitch. 79 miles an hour. It's one and two. The Phils try to take game one of the six game homestands. Thirty one thousand and thirty seven. On their feet. Ruiz is set. So is Papelbon. And the one two pitch. I'll be back. So we'll do it again. Jonathan's got good velocity today. A lot of fastballs at 93 miles an hour. With good location. Let's see if he can locate here. Rivera is set. Papabon is ready. The 1 2 pitch. Breaking ball. Hop foul to the second deck. And it remains one ball and two strikes. Well, this is a lengthy inning, pitch count wise. 25 pitches. This will be number 26. Is it the money ball for Jonathan Papelbon?
Again, the one two. And it hit him. And the bases are now loaded. And Tommy Medica will come up to pinch it for San Diego. Looks like a, a curve bar, or that breaking ball, and it gets away from him and just kind of spins up there. Looks like Rivera was looking out over the plate himself and couldn't get out of the way. So Medica will pinch it. And Alexi Amarista will come on to pinch run. Over at first base. Jose Valentin, the first base coach. And a quick meeting for Bob McClure. Well, the Phillies have, uh, have won 25 games this year. Very few of those games have come easy. And if this will be win number 26, it's not coming easy. So Medica, 268 hitter, he does have three home runs. Will be the pinch hitter. He has faced Papabon. Papabon struck him out. And with the bases loaded, the first pitch to him. At the knees on the outside corner, 0 and 1. I believe the home plate umpire Tim Timmons may have been hearing some stuff in the dugout. He's been pretty much steady with that pitch on the outside part of the plate tonight and in that location height wise. He's been pretty consistent all night. Ground ball to shortstop. This should do it. Rollins has got it. Flips to second in time. And Jonathan Papelbon becomes the 26th relief pitcher in baseball history to reach 300 saves in a career as the Phillies will pull out a 5 to 2 victory over the San Diego Padres. And you saw the sigh from Papelbon, the exhale. It wasn't easy. He's had a lot of one, two, three saves this year. This one had a little tension to it. But he's able to pick up career save number 300. It ties him with Hall of Famer Bruce Souter and with Jason Isringhausen. Our Chevrolet player of the game is the big reason why Marlon Bird's three run home run kind of relaxed everyone and broke a one all tie. Back in the fourth inning, it was a four run inning for the Phillies. And they went on to win it five to two. Oh, here's the final out. He worked it away from Medica. Look where Ruiz is set up. Look where the pitch was. Pretty close. Gets a nice ground ball. Nice way to get your 300 save. So the reaction from Jonathan Papelbon, <laughs> he hasn't reacted that way since the 24th of May, but Murph, I'm sure this one felt pretty darn good. Yeah, I, I think it did, and it has been a long time coming, but number 300 for Jonathan Papelbon. So first of all, congratulations on what is really a, a remarkable career achievement. But, uh, it, you know, just uh, can you put it in perspective getting to that point, the 26th man in baseball history to do it? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's been a, a long journey for me. Um, you know, I've been able to stay healthy for most of the time, and I think that's been the major difference for me. And, um, you know, um, I didn't think it was going to come for a while there, to be totally honest. But, you know, um, I got a good support at home. Um, I think that's what makes the biggest difference for me, man. You know, when you when you stop and look at it, you tie a Hall of Famer today and Bruce Suter with 300. You also become the third youngest and the second fastest to get to this point. So when you look at it in that regard, you've got a long way ahead of you as well. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely think that um, this isn't what I decided to end on. I definitely want to go further, and um, hopefully I can uh, put the work in it takes to get there. And, um, you know, it's, just, it's, it's a really humbling experience. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to put in words. Real quick, let me just ask you about the win here because A.J. Burnett came out and did what he needed to do. Deke got the ball to you, and your offense came out. A complete team win today. Yeah, no doubt. I think A.J. came out and set the tone today, and, um, you know, um, it, it was STFD day, and then that's, um, that's, that's just what we do here, you know, and uh, hopefully we can start having some fun, you know, and uh, get on a little roll here. All right, that's what everyone's hoping. Jonathan, congratulations on a great accomplishment. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, thank you very much. Jonathan Papelbon, it took a few extra pitches than he would have liked, but then the reaction 
that we've grown to watch over the years. First with the Red Sox, now with the Phillies. Career save number 300. Jimmy Rollins certainly knows about history, whether it be individual or collective, and he made sure Pat got the ball.